Thank you very much, Stephen. Very warm welcome to all our Tech Field Day delegates, customers, and partners in the room, and all the viewers online. Um, so today we are going to talk about 11AC, as Stephen said, and we're going to introduce Aruba's 11AC solution. And I'll go into some of the details of our product and our uh, features and capabilities. We'll do some demos and uh, for the first session. And uh, then, of course, we'll carry on with the program with Pascal after that. So uh, let me, you know, before I, I jump into AC, let me first do a quick review of Aruba as a company uh, that's evolved over the last 10 years. Um, literally 10 years ago, 2003, is when we launched our first controller-based wireless LAN products to the market, uh, around this time, actually, May, May June of uh, 2003 it was. And the first generation of uh, capabilities, besides being controller-based, which was a new innovation at the time, uh, some of the new things we brought to the market were things like adaptive radio management, which was about automated uh, setup of, of basically the channels and the power levels on the access points. Uh, things like role-based access, which to this day remains a very unique capability of Aruba's products, where you are able to figure out based on the role of a user what kind of policy and access uh, control lists to apply to that particular user. And... Um, then, of course, we continue to innovate with security in mind because security was really the top of mind issue uh, back in the day when we were trying to make Wi-Fi more mainstream. That was what I call consider the first phase of uh, Aruba's evolution uh, in the industry. The second phase was, was really when we hit our stride in terms of um, gaining market share, making a bigger impact, and that happened with the introduction of our 11N products. 11N finally put the performance issue of Wi-Fi uh, to bed where people said, it's good enough for me to install Wi-Fi more widespread. And um, the other piece of the puzzle was 11N also introduced clients that were able to associate to 5 gigahertz, which was new. Until then, 11G was the norm, 2.4 gigahertz was what was going on. And with 5 gigahertz, we were able to take advantage of the extra capacity on the 5 gigahertz side. And uh, along came, of course, mobile devices and BYOD. And, of course, the last few years have been, all the rage has been about BYOD. Today, I think we mark the, the evolution of the company in the next phase and uh, uh, hope to continue to make waves in the industry uh, and gain share. Uh, this phase to us is the phase of applications. And uh, we are beginning to see the emergence of uh, multiplicity of applications on these devices. BYOD is a given. Everybody now says it's past tense. Everybody has two, three devices now. What they're doing on the devices is a lot more interesting in terms of the applications that they consume, and they're getting richer all the time. And uh, that, to me, is, is really the opportunity ahead for Wi-Fi. As more and more applications and more and more traffic uh, ends up on the wireless network, how does the wireless network adapt and behave uh, for these applications that are being consumed? And just last week, we, uh, and we've innovated this year, uh, the last 12 months in a pretty significant way in the applications arena, introducing capabilities like application RF, which gives us app visibility into what's happening over the air, features like workspace that allow you to uh, secure applications on a mobile device. And most recently, uh, just last week, we announced the acquisition of a company called Meridian uh, Applications, which takes advantage of location-based services. Uh, by delivering an app that is venue-specific. So you could be in a shopping mall, a casino, a resort, download an application for that particular facility and interact with the facility in real time. Uh, it could be wayfinding within the facility, finding different points of interest. It could be uh, interacting with content. If you're in a museum, you'd be standing in front of an exhibit, figuring out what that exhibit is all about. And if you're, of course, an advertiser in a mall, you know, get, sending you notification and coupons and advertisements uh, based on where you're situated inside a mall. These are all new opportunities for Wi-Fi, and we think the next phase is really going to be the phase where we transition from wireless being, you know, an adjunct to the wired network to truly replacing the wired network. And that, I think, really is the theme of what the rest of the day is going to be about. So uh, along the way, of course, we have, we, we have ourselves transitioned as a company from being a, a wireless company. In fact, if you look at our logo back in the early days, we were known as Aruba Wireless Networks because all we did was Wi-Fi. But, but what Wi-Fi has come to mean now is a lot more than simply the access point and the controller. 
it's the whole mobile environment and enabling mobile IT within, within the enterprise. And that's really the promise of the company, is to use Wi-Fi as the foundation, as the infrastructure foundation, but innovate on top of it to enable the end-to-end -end mobile IT experience for the enterprise. And that's really what, how we define ourselves as a company, and that's where we'll be innovating uh, as we go. Um, so today is about, with the advent of 11AC, enabling the all-wireless office. Uh, until now, I think we have hemmed and hawed about, can we really go to all wireless office? Uh, should, should we unify wired and wireless? We've talked about that in the past as well. Um, I think today I, I want to say it's that the time is here to really start to make the move towards migrating towards all wireless office. The, the most common question I get when um, I talk to a lot of customers about it is, when can I stop pulling cables? and um, in, inside these buildings, or at least rewiring these buildings. And uh, I can tell you, uh, starting with AC, we, we are confident in our ability to go and deliver on that vision of not having to pull that cable anymore. And what it boils down to are really three things. The first thing is really about enabling very reliable, very high-performance Wi-Fi. And uh, AC is a technology that allows us to deliver high performance, but there needs to be a lot of software around it to enable the reliable performance, and we'll talk more about that. The second piece, and perhaps uh, the most important piece, is uh, the desk phone. This is one of the reasons why the cables st still need to be pulled. Uh, people's, people have, have accepted that computers are all uh, going to be wireless. Tablets are obviously wireless, and smartphones are wireless but we still provision the desk phone at, a, at many of these offices. And as long as you have to do that, you have to pull cable, so the cost of cabling still is there. So this question has been, bugging, and, and we tried to introduce this notion of all wireless office back when we launched 11N, uh, but we couldn't answer this question of pulling the cable. So that's why unifying wired and wireless made a lot of sense. But uh, we've been partnering with Microsoft since the last few years with the vision of unplugging the phone. And today we'll talk more about how we can take advantage of Microsoft Link 2013, working with the wireless network to deliver a, a far you know, richer unified communications and collaboration experience over wireless, which really allow, allows you to unplug the phone. And finally, of course, to all uh, us network administrators, uh, once everything is over the air, how do you troubleshoot and manage this environment in a reliable way? Uh, this boils down to visibility and really deep visibility, so you know exactly what's going on over the air with respect to applications, devices, users, RF spectrum, and uh, really making you comfortable that you don't have to have that backup cable ready uh, when things don't work. Uh, time to troubleshoot, time to repair is going to be dramatically cut in, uh, in a significant way uh, when you have much deeper visibility. So those are the three areas that, that we are going to focus on today, and that's where our innovation energy has been, has been focused. The first, uh, you know, moving to 11AC, we are going to talk about uh, our new Aruba 220 series access points, uh, which also comes with a new capability called Client Match. It's a unique software capability that uh, really delivers the performance promise of 11AC. Uh, we'll touch more upon that. Around unplugging the phone, of course, we will talk about how Microsoft Link running on um, not only your PCs, but on tablets, uh, not just Microsoft tablets, but iOS and Android tablets as well, and, and of course all the smartphones out there, enabling truly this mobile unified communications experience within the office. And, and finally, uh, we'll talk about our software features uh, with Aruba OS 6.3 and AirWave 7.7, which deliver on this visibility component to allow you to get more comfortable uh, not having to pull these cables in these offices. And um, to us, this vision is really uh, a very different way to think about the network. And if you look at the, the, uh, our approach, what we are saying is unequivocally <coughs> take the step towards replacing the wired network with wireless infrastructure and redirect your investments, IT investments and budget, towards mobilizing the enterprise. And this is in direct contrast to unifying wired and wireless, which is much more to do with upgrading your wiring closet switches so you can integrate wireless within the wiring closet switch. Um, to, to us, that's still 
uh, smacks of having wired infrastructure, all the ports, upgrading those ports, and then having wireless in addition to that. Whereas what we're saying is you don't need stacks and stack of, uh, stacks of switches to enable the next generation IT uh, infrastructure. And uh, I was driving in this morning thinking about some inspiration to share with all of you. And uh, because this is quite a different way to think about networks. And uh, the, I want to read you a poem. I've never done this for launches before, but I will. It's a, it's a slightly long poem, so stay with me. This is, uh, this is a poem by Robert Frost. And I think you might, have, you might have read this. It's called The Road Not Taken. How many of you have read that? Yeah. So it says two, two roads, uh, so, I'm sorry, road not taken. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry, I could not travel both. And be one traveler, long I stood, and looked down on one as far as I could, to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other, as just as fair, and having perhaps the, 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 the claim that was better, because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though, as for that passing there, had worn them really about the same. And both that, that morning equally lay, in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled, and that has made all the difference. To me, that, that poem represents the uh, next 10 years of what infrastructure models should be built. Not many all wireless networks have been built out there. there there's been a few, but I think uh, starting with with the enabling of the all wireless office starting today, we want to be able to go build that and take the road less traveled. Um, so with that, let me move on to the, the um, product components of the, of the launch. Uh, the first one is the access point itself. And uh, we're introducing the Aruba 220 series access point, which is uh, uh, built to be managed either through the controller or can be controllerless using the Aruba Instant uh, capability. And um, uh, some of the key features and capabilities of this access point, it's uh, a three-stream, um, you know, MIMO-based access point, has the ability to do three streams on five gigahertz uh, with full 11 AC support. We'll do a performance demo to, to actually show you how much we can get. And on 2.4, uh, we can support 11N, and in addition to 11N, we can also do a Turbo Qualm if you have Broadcom clients. So you have the ability to go beyond single spatial stream 11N uh, performance uh, if you have 11AC uh, you know, 2.4 capability. Um, some of the other features, it's got dual gigabit Ethernet links, uh, fundamentally because now you have the ability to put more than a gigabit Ethernet worth of traffic over the wire from the access point. And granted, that's probably not going to be the case day one because a lot of your clients are going to be 11N. But as the networks migrate, uh, you have the opportunity to uh, do ether channel on the two ports and get two gigabit uh, you know, worth of capacity or dual home them to multiple switches and get high availability at the same time. And uh, another very important feature which we strived very hard uh, to do was to have interoperability with dot three AF power over ethernet on the switch side. Um, the, uh, the power of the access point with 11 AC increases beyond the standard AC, AF budget. Uh, but what we have done is built some intelligence to automatically turn down some of the hardware functions within the access point and yet make it interoperable with your infrastructure out there. So there's no need to go out there, replace your wiring closet switches to get to 11 AC. You can go, if, you're, if you have AF-capable wiring closet switches, you can plug right in, take advantage of the new performing access points, and as you transition your wiring closet, we'll take advantage of the extra capacity that's available on, on AT. Um, internals, uh, I'll deconstruct an AP for you, but fundamentally it's purpose-built, which meant the CPU inside the access point was mated to the high-performance uh, requirements of the dual radio. AC capabilities, so you get 
you really are able to deliver on the promise of uh, AC. It was not 11N AP uh, with a module, uh, which basically means the CPU capabilities tend to be lower performance in that case. Uh, antennas, we get a lot more flexibility in doing purpose-built uh, uh, designs, so you get much better RF coverage as a result of that because of better antenna placements. Uh, I already talked about energy efficiency. Because it is purpose-built, we could reduce the power footprint of this access point down to 15 watts versus 25 watts of the modular devices that's out there. And also, because it is purpose-built, we could make it a lot smaller and lighter uh, to make it easier to go deploy. Uh, I have a couple of the, the models here uh, for you to, to look at later. Uh, this one has integrated antennas. This is obviously, obviously the, the antennas with, with you know, detachable capability. Uh, this access point, I'll just deconstruct it a little bit for you. Um, first off, the covers don't have any um, perforations in them, any vents. We used to have them in the past. Uh, we heard feedback from a bunch of our customers in healthcare saying we need to be able to clean these for infection control in hospitals, and uh, we've eliminated the vents entirely from the covers. Um, we have a, a metal sink, heat sink at the back. It is designed to be uh, easy to mount as well as because it's metal, uh, the extra, extra power that's consumed by the access point is, uh, is actually vented through these, these metal back ends. And inside, of course, we have, we have the electronics uh, of the access point. But the most interesting thing is uh, we never had the uh, ISO plane uh, for isolating the antennas uh, from the electronics before. The isolation used to be just on the radio here, as you can see on the, on the aluminum. Uh, but what we found is there is spurious uh, emissions that come through on the board and sometimes interfere with the, with the uh, antenna performance. And uh, we've gone to great lengths to introducing this, this new uh, concept called an isolation plane, which is also all metal. And the antennas are placed on the other side of it. So there's no uh, interference coming from the electronics on the board towards the, the place where the antennas are actually situated. And then, of course, the, the antennas themselves are optimally placed on this to give you the highest performance because we have the full plane versus a, a small area uh, that would be the case if it was a modular access point. So that's a little bit of the innards. Uh, it's available uh, for you to take a look at and uh, come by and, and uh, view afterwards during the break. <laughs>